Hi there, in this video I'm going to machine the cylinders for the Jerry Howell V-Twin. So I've got a couple of lumps of uh, cast iron and I'm using this four jaw chuck. I'm just going to face this end. So I've just centre drilled and just as a bit of an insurance policy I've put this uh, life centre on. What I need to do now is to uh, turn this diameter down to around about 2.55 of an inch, it's not critical. Okay, so what I need to do now is to reverse it in the chuck and repeat the same process on the other side, but I'll do that off camera. Okay, so I've uh, cut it to length, which is two and a half inches, and uh, I've centre drilled and then opened it up with a six millimetre stub drill. This is a, another six millimetre standard drill length, so I'm going to uh, drill as far as I can, and then I'm going to uh, gradually open it up to uh, get to 13 millimetres in diameter, most of which I'll do off camera. Okay, so it's uh, 13 millimetres at the moment. I'm going to use this boring bar to get it down to round about 0.96 of an inch in diameter. Well, it's taken me about a day to get to this point and um, these bores are around about 964,000 in diameter so eventually these need to be opened up to uh, around about an inch or an inch and a thou or an inch and two thou I've not decided yet um, so I think now it's uh, a matter of setting up me uh, between centres boring bar now this setup is a, a bit convoluted um, but first of all what I did was I bolted this piece of metal down here to be 90 degrees 
with the cross slide so I'm happy that's perfect I've got another one of those at this side and by uh, I've put some parallels in here and packed the bottom out to stop the parallels from moving inwards and uh, after a bit of experimentation I think I've got the height of these parallels to be correct and to check that I know that the diameter of this cylinder is currently 2.546 of an inch if I halve that that gives me 1.273 of an inch now so that's 1.273 from there up to there and I know the centre height from here to the bottom of the cross or to the top of the cross slide is should be 2.366 so if, if I add 2.366 onto 1.273 the height from here to the top of the cylinder should be 3.639 now I've got a bit of a problem in the fact that this gauge won't quite fit across there so what I've had to do is to put some parallels down here and the height of these parallels is 0.786 so if I take 0.786 off 3.639 I get 2.853 so that's what this distance should measure so if I zero it looking for 2.853 and it's 2.840 13th hour out I'll double check that because last time I did it, it was spot on. <laughs> I've got a bit of a wobble there, haven't I? Let me do it with two hands. Let's clean everything up. Two point eight five, and I'm looking for two point eight five three. So it's three thou out. I don't think that's a problem. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make some pieces of wood uh, with a profile like this, half circle. I'm going to bolt this down. Once I've done that, I'll get back to you. Okay, so to uh, centre on the cross slide, I've used this coaxial indicator. Now, I've realised that I've got a problem here because at the bottom it's registering too low and the top too high so I think what's happened is when I bolted this down it's moved uh, the piece fractionally you know probably about just a few thou so what I'm gonna have to do is um, take some of this packing out probably this uh, ruler here 
which will allow the two sides to come in a bit and it will move it up. Uh, so I'll have a play off camera and then I'll get back to you. Well, after a lot of uh, fiddling around, um, I uh, took the ruler out, which was 38 thou in width, and replaced it with uh, some shims, which are about 6 thou. And uh, it's pretty close. And it's uh, close throughout its length. So bearing in mind that there's going to be about 20 thou taken off each side, I, th I think this setup will be okay. Now uh, a while back I installed some uh, locks on my cross slide. So I've just nipped those up to make sure that um, everything's sort of going to be as tight as possible. Okay, so this between centers boring bar, it's got a, a cutting tip here, which is adjustable. Now I've just measured the width of the bar, which comes in at, let me see, um, point 0.7465 of an inch. And then I've measured the distance from the top of the bar to this tip, which comes in at 0.8545. So if I take 0.7465 off 8545, I get 0 0.1080 which is this distance here. So to get the overall diameter that this is currently set to, I need to add another 0 0.1080 onto um, 0.8545. So it's, it's just like the tips out here. And that comes in at 0 0.9625. And I thought I was about 40 thou out um, when I machined the uh, the bores. So um, what I'm going to do is uh, currently I think that's um, just running freely inside the bores, which sort of makes sense really. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use an adjusting tool to move this tip out by um, just five thou initially. So the way to adjust it is to keep a little bit of pressure on there, on the tip. This is just snugly fit up to the top of the cutting tool. And I've got some graduations on here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to loosen this off. Then I'm going to move these graduations by uh, 5 thou and tighten it up again take it off And uh, we'll have a go at an initial cut. So I'm driving the bar using this method here. I'll just give it a try. I'll uh, go on um, a, uh, the low carriage feed, the slow carriage feed, first of all. Got a live centre on the other end. Speed it up a little bit. And just put a bit of that in. And we shall give it a try. Okay, so I think from the sound of the cutter, it was cutting slightly more off one side than the other, 
but hopefully it'll uh, sort of even itself out on the next few cuts so what I'll do is I'll just um, take the bar out I'll inspect the inside and um, I'll adjust the cutter again and keep on repeating the same process until I get to uh, near my target and I think my target's going to be round about uh, 1.001 uh, of an inch so the inside bore is currently uh, 0.984 of an inch and I'm just incrementing the cutter by 5th hour at a time so on my next pass it'll take another 10th hour off so it'll get it to 0 0.994 fingers crossed now this between centers boring bar it's um, a Hemingway's kits one and uh, I mean obviously you're making yourself but I find this adjuster really good invaluable really you can get quite accurate cuts and uh, this is my third run and uh, I've increased it by another 5 thou and uh, I'm cutting round about 300 rpm So currently we're at uh, 0.995 of an inch in diameter and the drawing suggests getting it to 0.999 of an inch and then hone it. But I'm going to um, change it slightly, I'm going to go for um, one inch uh, spot on, then I'm going to hone it probably to 1.002 of an inch because I think I'm going to use a Viton O-ring as opposed to cast iron rings, that's my plan. So what I need to do is um, adjust the boring bar again um, and I need to move that cutter out by two and a half thou. So hopefully this should be the final cut. Okay, so just to test this, this is um, 0.999 of an inch in diameter, and that just fits in there. And uh, well, it says 1.001 .001 of an inch there, the first bit, but it's actually 1.0005, so it's five tenths of a thou over an inch. It's ever so close. So I'm pretty happy that's that that's around a, an inch in diameter. I'll double check it with um, with this. That measures absolutely spot on an inch. So happy with that.
we ended up getting these to a diameter of um, 1.001 of an inch and um, I've decided I'll be making I mean this is just a dummy piston but making pistons out of um, aluminium and uh, not cast iron as recommended and I'll be going uh, 2,000 smaller in diameter so this is a 9 this is rather a 0 0.999 diameter piston So I'll be putting a Viton ring on there. So the outside diameter of this Viton ring is uh, 1.004 of an inch. But I think with um, adequate recess, I think I should get away with it. Once it's in place, it seems to slide pretty well. So that's my plan. So now it's time to machine the outside of the cylinder and um, it's a bit of a funny shape really because this area here is actually square so these corners protrude sort of outside the actual circular bit where the fins are so I think what I'm going to do first of all is reduce this outside diameter down to 2.230 because the because the um, actual cylinders are quite a bit quite a bit bigger than that to accommodate for these corners so if I machine that outside diameter down up to that point and then um, I'll probably switch it round in the chuck and machine this area here I think. I've not been able to go to the uh, full length because uh, it's seated against the uh, chuck uh, but I'll get it to the required length by switching it round in the chuck and uh, doing the other areas. Okay, so now to cut some fins. So I've used this three jaw chuck and provided some extra support um, with this live center and uh, this piece of aluminium 
it's got the end turned down just so it fits in uh, into the cylinder a little bit into the bore and uh, this is 3 30 seconds of an inch parting tool and I put it on the end moved it 3 30 seconds of an inch in and then moved it to point two six of an inch so we just put it on that position um, and I need to cut to a depth of uh, I'm struggling here cutting these grooves. I didn't have this problem when I uh, machined the hoggle at cylinders, and uh, I've sharpened the uh, parting tool. Um, I've honed it. I've got it on centre, um, and I've never tried this method before. Now I've, I've turned the parting tool upside down, and I'm running the machine in reverse but I'm still getting uh, quite a bit of vibration. tending to uh, cut a lot better now. Um, I'm running around about 110 rpm on the outside diameter. When I get closer in I'm going at about um, 180 and uh, it's uh, working okay. So yeah, making really good progress now. Now this really is weird. Um, <laughs> it's gone from being really difficult to cut to being really easy to cut, which doesn't make any sense really. I mean it has helped by um, putting it in reverse and turning this tool upside down. And uh, I don't need any WD-40 now, all the vibration seems to have disappeared. And uh, I'm starting my cut on the outside diameter around about 100 RPM. When I get a bit closer to the centre, um, I'm going about 130 but it's a breeze it, the, the first couple must have taken me an hour each these are taking me about five minutes if that
How cool is that? Well, I'm really glad that I uh, remembered that tip to put the machine in reverse when using the parting tool. And the first time I've tried it, and uh, this second one, I think that was the second one, only took me about an hour to do all that machining with the parting tool. Really happy. Uh, so what I need to do now is to go over to the mill and uh, machine these sides off here to create a square with sides equal to uh, 1.75 of an inch. Well I calculate this 0.4 of an inch to come off this. So I'm just going to rest the flat edge on uh, these parallels and then tighten the vise up and then it's just a matter of taking another 40 thou off that top but I'll uh, do that off camera. So to machine the top and bottom edges um, I've just placed it in the vise between the jaws against these two edges that I've just machined and I've put them um, set square on this end here to make sure it's parallel so it's just a matter of um, machining round about uh, 0.4 of an inch off the top of that once I've done that I'll switch it round do the other side but I'll, I'll do the machining off camera because it's a bit repetitive okay so I'm just holding the part in some v-blocks uh, in the large vise and I need to make sure that this side is parallel with the bed so I just put a gauge on it I'm pretty happy with that. So I've centered on the outside of the ball. Set the DRO X and Y axes to zero. So I'm on center. Now what I need to do is to um, center drill in four places for the holes that are going to bolt it to the crankcase and uh, these positions are um, 9 uh, sorry 0.625 of an inch from the centre and uh, it's a matter of just uh, centre drilling and then going through with a 9, uh, 964 drill bit but I'll do all that off camera well I don't know it wasn't until I started looking at the footage and editing the video that I, I, I realised that the vib vibration problem seemed to go away when I was cutting the grooves once I'd tightened up this collar on this live centre. Uh, but I never associated it at the time. Uh, but anyway, that seemed to sort the problem out. Um, but apart from that, these uh, cylinders have turned out pretty good. The only outstanding issue, I think, is to drill and tack four holes in each cylinder to hold the cylinder heads on. But I'll do that at a later stage, that's very sort of straightforward stuff really. Um, and uh, all in all it's uh, starting to look like an engine. Anyway, I uh, hope you enjoyed the video and I hope to see you later.